Today we're going to do a bit of an experiment. We're going to see if you can tell the difference between images shot on the GFX 100S with the one 10 millimeter f2 lens and the X-H2 with the 56 millimeter 1.2 lens, the Mark II. So when taking into account the crop factor of both systems, both lenses are roughly 85 millimeters. On the XF side, we have an MSRP of roughly $3,000. On the GFX side, we have a MSRP of roughly $9,000. So let's see if you can tell the difference and let's see if the GFX takes better photos, specifically $6,000 worth of better photos than the XF system. Let's get into it. So just to get technical for a minute, let's talk about the differences between these lenses. So on the XF system, we have the 56 millimeter 1.2 WR, the Gen 2 version of this lens. It's an 84 millimeter equivalent. The aperture is an F1.2 to F16. It weighs in at 15.7 ounces or 445 grams. The minimum focal distance is just about 20 inches or 50 centimeters. And the MSRP is $1,000. And on the GFX side, we have the GF1 10 millimeter F2 lens. This lens is an 87 millimeter equivalent. It has an aperture of F2 to F22. It weighs 2.22 pounds or 1,010 grams. This minimum focal distance is just about three feet or 90 centimeters. And the MSRP is $2,800. And for the body, just to get into some general specs, on the X-H2, we have a 40.2 megapixel sensor. It is a 16-bit camera. The MSRP is $2,000 and the IBIS is seven axis. The GFX 100S has a 102 megapixel sensor. It is a 16-bit camera as well. The MSRP is $6,000 and this camera has a five axis IBIS. And the main differences include the drastic price difference as well as the resolution differences. So let's jump into a guessing game. So for this segment we just looked at, I don't think the photos were drastically different for the street section segment, but let's take a look at some of these up close. On the left, we have the X-H2, and if we zoom in to 100%, GFX zoomed in at 100%. Pixel peeping here, but this is a battle of the cameras. At 100%, you don't have the level of detail that you have on the GFX. If we zoom in a little bit more, you can see that the bulbs here are a little bit not hyper sharp, but on the GFX, naturally, we can just keep zooming in. We're at 300% here. And, you know, I think that maybe 200 is a little bit, a little bit better. But the drop off, of course, if we keep going. So this was the point of focus. That's what I focused on for both cameras. You know, looking at an image like this, they pretty much look identical until you zoom in. So X-H2 switch positions. It's on the right over here, GFX on the left. The X-H2 definitely has more grain, as you could see. And they are both shot at the base level ISO, not low, but one click above low. And taking a look at this image, zooming in to 200% on the GFX, zooming in at 200% on the X-H2. Um, not bad, X-H2 is definitely impressive. Um, I'm not gonna take anything away from it. The X-H2 is about 40% of the resolution of the GFX. Everything looks hyper sharp, very low grain. This looks really, really, really nice really high-end and pleasing. X-H2 is just not doing it at 200%, but if we zoom out to 100%, still looks great. And one more to just talk about resolution. Um, this image looks much better than the previous. It looks really sharp here. If you were to just look at the, the lower section of windows, not bad, the GFX is definitely a bit sharper. If we look at the building, um, again, we could just see that the X-H2 has substantially more grain. And one thing I also want to point out here is that they both are shot wide open. So if we zoom in on this tree, uh, we can see that the tree has you know more depth of field 
applied to it with the GFX. Um, the tree basically looks like it's shot at a higher aperture on the X-H2 than the GFX, and that is due to the crop factor also being applied to the aperture. I think for this section specifically, especially compared to the previous section of street photography, the results are much more definitive. With this section, I mostly shot wide open, but I did bump up the 56 millimeter to F2, just so we could see F2 to F2. I understand that there is a crop factor, just helps to visualize it a little bit and truly see that the crop factor does play into it. Just on a surface level, if we are comparing the zoomed out image um, both images, we can see that on the 56, the bokeh is not as smooth. And this is shot, both are shot wide open, uh, the GFX on F2, the 56 millimeter on F1.2, on the base level ISO for each. And if we zoom in to the flower, um, we can see that the 56 has a bit of chromatic aberrations here. Not bad. This image, if we look at the original, um, you know, properly exposed and all of that, um, plenty of this was definitely a bright flower so getting the level that we could get to where we could see pretty much all of the detail and recover pretty much everything is definitely impressive this is definitely a big jump up from previous generation xh and you know xt cameras for sure this one i shot both of these at f2 so the xh is not shot wide open it's bumped up a little bit to f2 and massive massive difference in background comparisons uh, it's even apparent when we zoom in, um, you know, the background is just quite simply not as smooth. It looks like it's more blurry on the GFX. And just another example here, um, 56 millimeter shot at 1.8. So I bumped up just a little bit. If we take a look again, the background is just not as smooth, uh, much more smooth on the GFX. Um, even in this bush over here, it's just not as smooth. Definitely more smooth on the GFX if we zoom into the flower. Another big point worth bringing up is that the X-H2 is much more grainier than the GFX. Um, a lot of these images I was looking at beforehand and I'm like, wow, I, I, quest I somewhat question my decision to purchase the GFX, but zooming in here, I mean, there's no, no grain at all whatsoever on the GFX and we have pretty, pretty grainy photo on the uh, X-H2. I wouldn't necessarily say from my experience with the X-H1 that, you know, this is way more grainier than the X-H1. Um, I just think, you know, it's, the GFX is, you know, studio grade uh, medium format camera and it captures less grainy photos. Another example, both of these this time shot wide open, X-H2 on the left, GFX on the right. And just another example at how much smoother the background is on the GFX. As you can see, the X series, um, not as smooth. Zooming in both at 100%. Uh, again, same thing we've been seeing before. Despite this being shot on a sunny day and even a bright subject, the X-H2 is definitely way more grainier than the GFX. Uh, aside from the heavy amount of more detail, definitely a bit grainier. Um, still beautiful shot, but much more grainy. And if we zoom in, um, naturally the GFX has way more resolution, but that's not really a surprise. And just one more example with flowers. Uh, both these shots are shot wide open. Let's zoom in at about 100% here on the X-H2. Decent level of detail. If we zoom in to 200%, uh, clearly it's a bit too much. 100% uh, is about all you can go. On the GFX, let's just, uh, you know, we can basically match this at about 
50% with the GFX. So on the XH2, we got 100%, GFX 50. And we could, of course, keep going. You know, we just have way more resolution on the GFX. But pretty, pretty drastic difference in terms of, obviously, zoom level. But if we also zoom out and we look at the background, we can also see that the GFX is also a bit more smooth. Um, definitely apparent here if you look at these groups of flowers, um, the GFX is a bit more blurry on the X-Series. Obviously, it's, it's not. Also, another thing to look at, these branches in the background. The GFX, they almost blend into the background completely. And just to look back and forth on these two images, just more apparent, again, on the GFX, we have the background a bit more blurry and out of focus. You can see it apparently with the legs of the chair and with the X-H2 and the 56, it's just not as smooth. If we look at the books on the shelf, again, they're just a bit more out of focus on the GFX. If we look at the books over here, same thing, uh, just a bit, bit more smooth on the GFX. We are really splitting hairs here. We are pixel peeping. I think at the end of this video, I expect all of you to leave a comment and let me know which system you like better. And zooming in to just a crop of Duncan over here. Naturally, we can't really zoom in a ton on the 56. Even on the GFX, uh, we really reach the, the breaking point at 200% here. 100 is a bit nicer. Um, we get really, some really nice texture in his eye. And on the, uh, on the 56, um, you know, we reach the, the limits and we don't have that, that texture. Also, as you can see, a bit more chromatic aberrations here. Jumping into the car segment, we have the GFX on the left, XH2 on the right. And zooming in, obviously my point of focus was the lettering on this Le Mans. Uh, we're, not, we're at 100% on the GFX. We are at 200 on the XH2. And uh, naturally with the high resolution, these letters look much sharper. But in terms of depth of field, the results are pretty similar on this image specifically. So for this image, I basically match both lenses at F2. And zooming in just a little bit, we can see the GFX is just has much more of an extreme drop off. The garage door over here um, is much more blurrier than the X-H2. Um, on the X-H2, it, it kind of almost looks in focus. The GFX just has much heavier fall off. Even on the car, um, I matched the focus point was this, this grill uh, right above the door, right beyond the door. So um, we can see we have the doorknob pretty much in focus on the XH2 and the GFX at such an extreme fall off. Um, the doorknob's not even in focus, but this grill, uh, if we zoom in, hyper sharp. I'm not gonna zoom in the XH2 because it's not gonna be as sharp. And one more example, uh, this Ferrari. Let's take a look at the center of this wheel. This was my focus point at 200%, the XH2 not really doing it. Um, we'll, we'll zoom in to 300 just, just to do a quick comparison. But on the GFX, uh, we have a fully in focus stallion, horse, whatever it is. Um, really just no comparison here with much more resolution. Also, the GFX, as you can see, has some grain. It's not a magical camera that doesn't void grain altogether. But if we just match this up a little bit, uh, the GFX basically at 100% doesn't really look like it has any grain visible at this point. But on the X-H2 at 200%, even at 100% still does look like there's a bit of grain. But overall, I would say, you know, the GFX still reigning supreme, has a much higher quality image. And as a bonus, let's jump into a quick studio session here. I have the GFX on the left, XH2 on the right. And if we zoom on in, this is studio lighting on a tripod, so I expect pretty solid results. Um, on the XH2, we are at 200%. Clearly that's a little bit too much, so let's zoom out a little bit. It looks like both lenses have a pretty pretty extreme depth of field. We can see some uh, fringing chromatic aberrations on the uh, 56 as to be expected since we've been seeing it a lot lately with all the images we've been looking at. Both lenses, they just have a pretty extreme depth of field. I mean, you would never shoot this wide open on a studio shot uh, unless you had a real specific look you were going for. 
you, you just quite simply you can't zoom in a ton on the uh, 56. Um, 200 percent I would expect to get 200 percent out of this especially for a studio. Um, you have some really extreme uh, fall off and chromatic aberrations here. If we look to the uh, GFX that's just quite simply you know you have much more in focus here despite them being sh both shot wide open. Definitely a, the 110 is a ma major winner here. Not great on the 56. Bumping both lenses up to f8. Um, let's just zoom on in. On the GFX we are at 100% on the 56 we are at 200%. Again I would reasonably expect 200% out of a studio shot cam both cameras on a tripod with lighting pretty sharp image definitely really nice due to the megapixels you're just not not getting anywhere near the same uh, level result that you are on the gfx it looks like the the 110 has much more depth of field um the 56 is almost you know the 56 is almost sharp edge to edge at least much more so than the gfx obviously the grain is just very 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 apparent on the xh2 the gfx simply has no grain whatsoever 56 is definitely pretty sharp it definitely does hold up pretty well here when it is bumped up to f8 um, the chromatic aberrations seem to be gone naturally the gfx is just a much sharper image gfx on the right this time as you can see um, you wouldn't shoot something like this wide open but for the sake of science uh, really really big level of fall off here um, but both lenses are pretty extreme uh, we, I got, it was, uh, it was pretty challenging, but I got the point of focus to be this, uh, this Lego guy, his head, and, uh, you know, obviously have much more resolution on the GFX. And jumping into one more example here, I have my, uh, trusty Canon T1i, I believe, and I set my focus point to the, uh, the lens cap here. Overall, you know, both, both lens caps, pretty super sharp, much more extreme fall off on the GFX, and if we make our way up, I mean, both images kind of look pretty extreme. GFX, I think, looks a bit more blurry with the fall off. And bumping both images to f8, just like kind of what we've seen already, the X-H2 definitely has more in focus than the GFX. Uh, we definitely would need to stop up a little bit more on the GFX. The GFX is a bit, bit out of focus. You just need to bump the aperture on the GFX a bit more. Naturally, be focus stacking this image if you are shooting it professionally anyway. Let's see which system has better bokeh and which system has a more shallow depth of field. The XF56 has a large aperture of 1.2. The GFX 110 has an aperture of F2. So naturally, the larger aperture of 1.2 should yield better results, right? More extreme? Let's find out. So this was a bit trickier of a test. In retrospect, I should have used a larger image so that I could basically match the bokeh. And the reason that this is an issue is because the 110 has a three foot minimum focal distance and the 56 has a much smaller minimum focal. So I should have found something that was a bit larger and then I could have matched the, the distance a bit better. I did have to crop in a little bit on the GFX as you can see here can't really even nitpick that much about shapes in the background or whatever. I think the 56 is, is a bit smoother due to, you know, kind of cropping in on the GFX. But uh, if we zoom into the lens a little bit, GFX actually has more of the letters in focus. The 56 is a bit more extreme, but I'm fairly certain the 56 was a bit closer. So we're kind of getting the results of distance here. Um, naturally, we have some fringing, chromatic aberration going on with the 56, just like we've seen throughout this video. But uh, overall, I mean, both of these look pretty great. Here we are taking a look at both lenses at the highest aperture they each have. So 56, we have a max of f16. On the GFX, we have a max of f22. I would say the 56 has a bit more detail um, on the items in the background. This whole subject is pretty much in focus on both of these lenses. If we were to heavily zoom, we can see that, you know, we've definitely hit diffraction here. Um, these letters on both lenses aren't aren't hyper sharp. Matter of fact, the 56 almost looks a little bit sharper. Yeah, these letters they they 
pretty much look pretty comparable on both. Uh, these, these, this result, I would say, is pretty even. The 56 has more in focus overall. The GFX still has a little bit of uh, depth, more depth of field going on, but I thought this would be a fun comparison. And lastly, let's see which cameras have better dynamic range. Both cameras are 16-bit. Let's see how long the X-H2 can hang. So the first of the dynamic range tests is going to be this brick wall. And what I basically did was I properly exposed and I underexposed. I underexposed greatly and then I really, really, really underexposed. So I matched these up the best I could with the light meter, with the internal light meter in the camera. I basically just matched up the same exact stop points. So let's take a look at how these fare. Looking at the first set of images, both of these were the properly exposed ones. Um, naturally, the GFX, it just has a different uh, color temperature with both cameras shot at properly exposed levels. Uh, the noise is fine. Looking at the next set, if we adjust these images so that the exposure is properly exposed, uh, and I already did that, so just taking a look. If we zoom in 100% on the X series and on the GFX, pretty minimal noise on both. So this is a Pretty, pretty cool thing. I think, you know, dynamic range on modern cameras is really great. Looking at the pretty greatly underexposed version, uh, you could just about make out the bricks. And bumping these up to both of these, I just moved the exposure up to, you know, up by five. And the GFX looks pretty good. Um, I'm not, you know, we're hyper zoomed in here, but I mean, it's not, it's, you can definitely see noise, but it's really not, you know, it's not jumping out at me. Um, you could definitely make this a very usable image and this is the original so definitely very impressive if we look at the X series we'd have a ton of color noise um, this does not handle it very well at all in my opinion um, I think if we change this to auto white balance obviously it's better um, but it, the, the color overall just does not look does not look great um, zooming in a little bit more we are at 200%, so that's a bit much, but this wasn't a tripod. So as you can see, we just ha start to lose a lot of detail here. And here is the super underexposed. As you can see, you can't see anything. And I basically brought the exposure up 100%. Let's just bring the GFX up more. This is pretty close, I think. So looking at the X-H2, uh, we have a really, really heavy degrade in image quality, very big loss of color, uh, super grainy. You know, this is really, Pretty poor image. Naturally, I don't think you'd want this image of a brick wall this underexposed, but you know, we just lose a ton of detail. Looking at the GFX, um, I mean, you definitely have some really heavy grain going on. Um, it makes the image look a bit, you know, not as sharp. But overall, I mean, this night and day difference between the two probably make this into a usable image uh, on the GFX, whereas on the X series, I mean, this is really not. It's really not usable. Uh, the dynamic range is just substantially better on the GFX. And for the final dynamic range test, I switched to a small amiibo figure. And this was because I wanted to test out the color and see how it is affected as we underexpose. First, we have obviously properly exposed. And if we click to zoom in, um, we have a really great level of detail in both. The GFX is more extreme of a depth of field just as we would expect. We did shoot the 56 on F2 just to match up the aperture, just to see how that would look. And moving into, you know, pretty underexposed, I believe this was uh, negative 2.5. So I adjusted by 2.5 just to zoom in real quick. So this looks pretty good. It looks like on the X-H2, uh, we're at 200%, so that is a bit much, but you could definitely see the drastic difference in grain zooming in on the GFX. The grain is definitely still there. It's just also not really as noticeable. It's definitely more apparent on the X-H2, I will say that. Detail-wise, everything looks pretty good. And here we are at negative five in terms of underexposed. And here's where things start to definitely fall apart for, I would say both cameras, um, but definitely the uh, X-H2. So now we are at negative five in terms of underexposure. Now things start to get interesting. So zooming in, we can really see that the quality really starts to degrade on the X-H2. Um, we still have some sharpness going on for sure. The grain is really, really, really heavy 
we zoom in on the GFX grain is much, much less than on the XH2. And even the detail, we start to lose a bit of sharpness. At least that's what it looks like. Just overall, a ton of grain. The GFX kind of definitely salvageable at this point, for sure. But still, five stops underexposed is, is pretty bad. And from here, this is what the, the image looks like. As you can see, you really have no detail at all. It's completely underexposed. I just basically went from one fifth of a second and I just doubled it to one tenth. As you can see on the XH2, um, we, we're really losing a ton of detail in the image. Uh, the GFX is not great. We obviously have a ton of grain, um, but still have most of the details preserved. But uh, the XH2, I would say we definitely reached a point of no return for this image. Um, it's it really lost a ton of detail and there is tons of distortion, color distortion, not great. And lastly, I went from one tenth of a second to one thirtieth of a second. So really, really, really underexposed. This is what the original image looks like. As you can see, I'm zoomed in over here. This is what the, it's just total blackness. I bumped the exposure up and I bumped the, the curve up pretty, pretty far. The same results on each. And if we zoom in on the GFX, we still have, I mean, it's, it, let's not kid ourselves. We've, we've lost a ton of detail. Um, this is not really usable. On the X series, we have substantially less detail. I mean, this is, looks like it's some sort of filter applied to the image. In just in just doing a quick side by side, that you really you really cannot compare these images. The uh, the XH2 uh, is completely falling apart. Um, there's a ton of noise and color distortion. Uh, all the detail is is pretty much tanked. Um, this is not not recoverable at all. Um, the GFX holds it together pretty good, but even then it's still still not great. But if we were to compare the two, uh, clear win to the GFX as to be expected. So I thought this was a fun little game to play. Big shout out to Fujifilm for sending me both the X-H2 and the 56mm 1.2 to test out for a few weeks. I had a lot of fun with it. The GF100S and the 110mm lens I personally own. So I'm sure you have an idea of which setup I personally think performs better. But my question to you, is which setup do you think perform better and which setup would you personally go with? Do you think the GFX 100S with the 110 is worth the extra $6,000 price tag for the images it produces? Or do you think the X-H2 with the 56 millimeter lens produces images that are just as good or close enough and there's no way to justify that extra price tag? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to discuss more with you there and check out one of these videos next. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and hit that like button if you love photography. Also, let me know what experiments you'd like me to do next. And with that being said, I'll catch you in the next video.